So when you go to open it, you're going to notice there's going to be a total of 10 equal sized. Um, we got a Phillips 2.0, 10 of the same size. And then this one here is just a little bit shorter. So then after you remove those, you can flip it. And then from the front, put a guitar pick or just use your nails to clip it, to unclip it all the way to the front. And then you're going to lift it up from here, from the front upwards, because there's going to be three ribbon cables. And then once you remove those, then you're able to lift up the whole thing. As you can see, this is an Asus VivoBook Pro 17. Um, there's these small Phillips screws at the bottom, which I just used this right here to unscrew. And then from the top, you can just put a guitar pick, but you lift up from here to unclip and then you lift forward. And as you can see, there are three flex cables, one for the touchpad, one for the back LED keyboard, and another one for the keyboard. So you're just gonna lift those up and disconnect and then you can take off the whole thing. Notice that when you are disconnecting these, the first two, they lift up from the front, so it's these white parts, and then the back, and then the bigger one, it's from the back. So this is down to hold the cable down. You can lift it up from the back and then you're able to take out the cable. And with these two, it's from the front. So you just, so they're down like this. Then you just lift them up and you're able to pull out the cables. So after taking those Phillips screws from the bottom and you disconnect, these three connectors from the left you're able to take off the keyboard now the keyboard what i noticed is my left usb ports and card reader were not working and it turns out that this connector right here was not connected so when you remove the battery which is that right there it's just held down by phillips so you're just gonna remove some Phillips screws and then you're able to lift up the battery which connects right here and then you can see that the ribbon cable from the USB ports uh, USB 3.0s and the card reader connects directly to the motherboard and then also you're able to remove the four Phillips to remove the backup uh, hard drive the one terabyte that comes with it um, you're able to upgrade that or whatnot and then you're, you also have access to the fan. And then you can uh, disassemble the motherboard and flip it and uh, add more RAM. Because I believe there's two slots and currently it has one 8 gigabyte DDR4 RAM running at 2133 megahertz. So this is the inside, what it looks like. These are the nice big old speakers by Harman Carmen. That's the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi adapter, the dual band, and then that's pretty much it. So they made this laptop fairly easy to remove. Just when you lift it up, lift it up from the front so that you do not disconnect and or break any of those ribbon cables. And then make sure when you put it back that you have your USB and card reader uh, cable in case it sticks to the battery and you lift it up and it takes it out make sure that it's connected and yeah so once you put in the hard drive and you boot it in case you uh you put a faster ssd on uh as you can see here on port zero the one that you replaced down here is port zero port one is uh free i believe and port two is the Micron 1100, the 256 gig SSD. 
So then what you want to do over here, you can prioritize which one. Um, you press F2 to boot into this BIOS. Press advanced mode. Hovering over to the advanced option or advanced mode, you're going to go under advanced and you press on all the way at the bottom SATA configuration. You're going to make sure it's on AHCI. Then you're going to go back, go up to, to USB configuration. Um, let me go back. You're going to make sure that the legacy support is enabled. USB mass storage is enabled. Scroll over to boot. You're going to make sure CSM support is disabled and then you're able to disable fast boot. Then go over to security, scroll all the way down to secure boot, press enter. And you will make sure secure boot is disabled. Um, what else? And then also you want to make sure you plug it in on the right side as I believe the left side are USB 3.0 and they need drivers. So then save and exit, save changes and exit. And then F8 is to boot in, to go into boot menu. So you're gonna press F8 as it's booting. As you can see here, it is reading the flash drive, so I'm going to install Windows 10. I'm going to put it in the NVMe SSD rather than the 250 gigabyte 5400 RPM hard drive that I put in. I'll use the 250 gig as a backup and I will use the 256 gig SSD as the primary. So it's important to know which one is which. The 232 is the 250 gig and the 238 is the 256 gig. As you can see, I've named them, so it's easier for me to determine those. So for me, the 250 is the slower drive, so I'm going to delete this first and then click on that and I will press next. So I want to make sure I put it on the right drive so that uh, my boot ups are a lot faster. So hope this helps you guys into uh, putting a bigger memory into your um, into your Asus VivoBook Pro 17. The other models should be essentially the same process. Um, I know the BIOS will most likely be the same. So you can go ahead and follow this for the other different models, maybe the 15 inch and lower. So one thing you might notice when you install your operating system is that your backlit keyboard might not work. So with function F4, it's not working. So what you do is you come to their website and under BIOS utilities, you scroll down and what's the last thing that you see under ATK. It says ATK packages, drivers, and hotkey related utilities. So you download that, you'll open it. And you will notice right after I install this, all those hot keys will work. So function F4, as you can see now, there's light can't really see but here's the lights I'll turn them off as you can see now that the hot keys work so anything hot key related will work now 
So after you actually install Windows, you can restart and you can press F2 to go into the BIOS. And what you will do is you will re-enable Fastboot. So I'm pressing F2 and then I press on F7 or advanced mode. And then I'm going to go under boot and I am going to enable fast boot. You can also go down here, SATA configuration, no USB configuration, no. security so you'll scroll all the way down to secure boot and you can enable this then go save and exit save changes and exit and it should restart normally just make sure you don't have any usb or anything attached or if you do, then make sure that you prioritize the solid state drive as the first drive. And I believe everything works better. Fastboot will just make things load a lot quicker as well.